move on despite the moment. It's interesting, Jermaine, because I've, I've uh, and I suppose before um, we, we start the session more formally, I really get a sense from you and everyone, uh, this the social aspect comes up every single week. I've noticed all of you are really strong on that. So it's, it's really been, um, I'm, I've, I've become even more aware that that, can, that that social aspect is also driving you. So thank you for... For, 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 for bringing that to our attention. Yeah, thank you. Nadej, would you like to share anything? Hello. Um, Hello. Uh, <laughs> how are the coffee tours and the, uh, I would love you to share something with Gillian because you know that, that week when you were so, so eloquent about coffee yeah. and the different types of coffees. Do you know now when I go into the shop, I now mm -hmm. I, I ignore all the boring coffees and I keep saying, Nadej, you need to be right next to me and talking <laughs> me through this because you were so eloquent. So could you just share something? Because Gillian doesn't know much about your coffee business and I would love her to get some sense of the way that you were describing that. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, as she said, uh, I'm called Tanadej Wamahoro. I'm Randis. And uh, I'm in coffee business. Uh, it's been four years now, most, uh, almost five. And um, I have a coffee that's called Besma Coffee. We do uh, green coffee and roasted coffee too. We export uh, uh, around the world, and then we we supply it in a local market. We go for the coffee shops, uh, hotels, and uh, mostly um, uh, institutions, embassies. Yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. Well, do you remember you were talking about the different flavors? Because I was, you know, I, I said, oh, I don't drink coffee because it gives me a headache. And then you clarified for me. You said, oh, you're not drinking yeah. the right one. And then you took me down this whole gorgeous path of different flavors. Yeah. And I thought, oh, my God, clearly I don't know anything about coffee. Yeah. So talk to us about the flavors and so on. Okay, um, let me let me say let me talk about it in brief, if I may say, uh, starting from the plantation to the cup. Uh, first of all, it's um, coffee is a, it's a process, and uh, uh, from the plantation, it's uh, it's take between three years to five years. It's depend which kind of uh, and the type of. Uh, coffee that you, 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 you put on the ground. And, um, but normally uh, three years, you already have chilies to the, the coffee chili that is ready to be on the market. Um, after that part, you have to go for washing station, uh, which uh, has a part for screening the right coffee and, um, uh, drying um, that part can take uh, it's depend of the process too uh, but it's it can take between uh, uh, one month to two months or even three it's depend of the type and the style uh, of uh, drying process after that you enter in the state of uh, roasting coffee and um, that is when the, 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 the flavors, the smell, the taste come in. Mm. And uh, that requires um, more you roast the coffee, different flavors you can get mm. uh, according to the type of the coffee you want to make. Mm. I give an example. Uh, the coffee you will roast for cappuccino is different with the coffee you will roast for black coffee mm. and uh, it's something that most of the people don't know and mm. uh, sometimes people choose a coffee then it's it's come not being good to you and you thought the coffee is not good but 
the, 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 the problem wasn't the coffee, the problem was the choice you choose. And uh, most of the time, it's, it's even the, the problem, the company of uh, which kind of the type of the coffee you put on the market. Do you give some details on the packages where someone, if someone comes to buy the coffee, can know exactly what is inside? Because most of the time you buy the coffee, but you don't know what is inside. You know what mm. is inside when you get at home. So it's really important that you put a notice on the package so when someone come to buy the coffee, know exactly which type of the coffee I'm buying according to the requirements or which type of the coffee I want to make today or tomorrow even. Mm. So um, when you come to the roasting part, um, there is a difference of, of style of roasting. There's uh, the one mean common, it's a, uh, it's, uh, medium, what they call medium to dark, but technically that medium to dark does not exist. Actually, mm. it's a level of heat and the time of roasting, but in, in the easy way, we would call it medium to dark and we have dark. So um, all those three types of the coffee, it's, it's used in different ways. And uh, even if you want, there's another type of coffee called, um, uh, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a coffee that does not have a caffeine. Mm. Most of the time people have like a uh, problem with the, 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 the heart and stuff. That's the, 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 the cafe. Mm. That's the one they used to take. But uh, for me, I always tell people you have to have a little bit of caffeine. Otherwise, that is not coffee. You're drinking tea. You're drinking water. Um, <laughs> but I always say there is a difference where you can prepare the coffee and whatever the problem of a healthy problem you have, and you can't have any problem with uh, any coffee that you may take. Um, so when you finish the roasting coffee, that's when the coffee comes in the cup. And uh, that's where I was starting. You have to know your healthy life to know which type of the coffee you have to drink. Right. See, I, 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 yeah. I never knew that. And I just wanted to, that it to be shared with you, Gillian. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I really, I, yeah. I mean, it, from where Nadej started off, I immediately got the uh, sense that it's coffee drinkers who need to be educated. There's a lot of edu... I'm passionate about coffee. And by the yeah. way, just to share, you know, Rwandan coffee, big. it's a big thing in the UK right now. Yeah. Lot, lots of my friends are talking about moving to Rwandan coffee. I have a very dear friend in his 80s who has been uh, drinking Rwandan coffee for a while. And he's... A, it, it, I don't know what it is about the coffee he drinks nowadays, but... He, he, he has trouble with strong coffee and everything, but this coffee that he's drinking, he's saying is just right for him. It's just the right flavor. I might try and get some details about it and find out from you what it is. Yeah. Mm. And uh, most of the time when you come to the, to the coffee of Rwanda, we have, uh, um, we have four regions, which has uh, different flavors right. because of the soil. So um, it's really it's really good to to know which type of the flavors that you are looking for in the the coffee you want to drink, and uh, it's easier to 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 get it from um, from different presses, uh, as I said, because the flavor that you can get in the coffee which is coming from north is totally different with the flavors you will get in the coffee that's coming from south. Yeah, so um, the, the, the smell is different, the taste is different, right. and uh, you, you mm. might even say when it's come for roasting, even the time, the time for roasting is different. Right. The time you use for roasting might be even different because of the, the type of the coffee. The type of coffee, right. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen your next whole new world. Sorry. It's a whole new world. It's yeah. a song. I thought you were going to break into song then, Gillian. No, no, no. 
No, it's okay. just so I, I love coffee so much. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure whether I'm completely grateful to Nadesh for making me realise how ignorant I am, actually. <laughs> Gillian, I would never have known that. And that's really interesting because I just asked her to share. Yeah. And, and now this this whole world has opened yeah, up. Absolutely. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm off now. I'm going to have to find out a lot more. Wow. Oh, and, and, wow. And, and, and this is what we were saying to Nadezh a few weeks ago, you know, about the uh, the artifacts that can be created oh, to tell yes. the story. I mean, yes. what she what what often she hides as well is the fact that a quite a, a, a high percentage of the, the revenue goes back to supporting women coffee farmers yeah. as well. There's a really social story there in terms of the link back to. Uh, to to to, uh, to to in a social in a social way. So um... just because you've raised that again, Daryl, I would like to say a thought I had when Deborah was commenting on the power of that social side that Jermaine was referring to in terms of how mm. that motivated her. Mm. Um, we we I I haven't. We don't really have a developed social entrepreneurial ecosystem in the UK yet. We have lots of players, mm. but the main ecosystem, you all won't be surprised to know, is, is more driven by the for-profit um, mm. startups who mm. also do a lot of social work. But I think, I think there's really something about the social entrepreneurial ecosystem in Rwanda that, that could really have a global message it seems to me in a particular way i'm going to say so this is to do with my own interests which is about how how an entrepreneur is developed and motivated and sustained that yeah. actually that message about that the way that social mission the way jermaine's capturing that as a central motivation that is 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 almost given in a way in rwanda that mm. actually I, uh, you're saying, Daryl, one mm. needs to tease out mm. in the stories, mm. really. And I mm. think I think that I, there seems to be quite interesting things here that um, Rwandan entrepreneurs really are tapped into. Mm. You know, and certainly young energy. entrepreneurs as well. Yeah, as you mm. said before, it's certainly from the, the young are driving it, actually, aren't they? Globally. Yeah. Yeah, feeling. they are, and they yeah. are in the UK as well. Yeah. yeah, it's very much the millennial attitude. And I think also it's a way of Nadej really tapping into that, that social message to, to differentiate the brand as yeah. well. Because if I go into a local supermarket, I see lots of packets which just show me. It's a, there's a very big emphasis on the product, always. The product, the product. And we've been teasing out the last, in this Kwamagunga program, the need to focus on the the customer and understand the, the the pain and the struggles that the customer is facing and to meet those needs much more. Yeah, but Daryl, I don't mm. know if you and Deborah have both realized, um, mm. I don't know how many of the colleagues here know of Marks and Spencer, which is a very traditional uh, supermarket here, but particularly during this COVID period, Marks and Spencer have made some huge developments in telling the stories mm. of their products. No, really, really have moved a long way, including the global stories of their products. Mm. And I'm not suggesting for one moment they're doing it in, you know, as well as our young entrepreneurs could hear. I'm sure they could get some lessons from them. But I, I'm really, I think that signals something yeah. when a major supermarket yes. is doing a great deal of that and it's doing it about its suppliers in the UK as much mm. as anything as, as everything but also their international suppliers as well sure. so, so they'll be I looking think, at, think, if they're looking for coffee brands from Rwanda which are telling are tapping into that social message and absolutely. telling the story they yeah. will be that they will start they will be interested in having a conversation yeah Exactly. With those supplies in Rwanda, Nadej, take note. That's a really good thing to be tapping into. These key, or you know, often the customers is the the category buyers within supermarkets. So how do you yeah. tap into their world and their needs? Yeah. You know, what I are the people? I think there is developing a huge hunger among yeah. customers. 
I mean, I, as you say, Daryl, I think the young kind of take it a bit for granted that a lot of them are mm. looking for the ethics mm. of what they buy and the people who are doing things. But but I think there's I think there's more of a general. I don't think somewhere like Marks and Spencer would bother doing stuff like no. they're spending mm. quite a lot of money on it unless yeah. there was a wider hunger for these things, yes. which I think is interesting for your entrepreneurs to understand. You know, yeah. it's not it, it, it's general customers feel that yeah. knowing the story the human story of who's supplying this and yeah. why and yeah. and what how they how they grow things and how yeah. they run their farms etc yeah. that they that's part of them feeling safe and feeling secure and feeling loyalty to, yes. to the product absolutely there's a there's a resonance there's a connection yeah. there's a human yeah. connection and i don't know do you think that's come about more because of the, the of covid19 and what people have gone through do you think that's been a well i think it's I, I think i yeah i don't i mean i it certainly happened during this period that they've really gone big on it I've, mm. they were doing a bit of it before but now they I, I I almost feel, you know, that I would never have thought, for instance, two years ago, that I'd be using Marks and Spencer as an example <laughs> to what we're doing here. But actually, uh, they are examples because yeah. they're actually featuring the people and the yeah. process and how these people have built their businesses yeah. and, and really making the connection between the supermarket and these people. Who are wow. supplying and now on their products again your colleagues may be interested to know this on this call you know they named the farmer wow so that's been going on a bit for a while but they're really like so they're all they do all english strawberries at the moment but yes. they name you know they don't just they've got the flag on it that it's english but they're yeah. naming the farmer and the region mm. yeah mm. but this farm in kent yeah wow is is very interesting yeah and I don't think they would bother with all of that <laughs> no. unless their general customers, it was a plus. Mm. Yes, of course. Absolutely. They are a PLC, So that's a great they? message, I think, for social entrepreneurs because they have the best stories. I, I think they have yes. the best stories to tell. Yes. Absolutely. And I think that's what we want to start unlocking over the next few weeks on as we move forwards. The ability for you to tap into as Gillian said the the customers needs and for a big I mean for a big company like Marks and Spencer's which for what a hundred over a hundred years old in the in the yeah. UK yeah you know, has been yeah. through its ups and downs but it's certainly one of this yeah. the, the largest yeah uh, multiple retailer in the UK yeah, still multiple. yeah yeah you know and plays very heavily on its um, food offering um, it's slightly more uh, middle to up market yeah, um, yeah. yeah, and um, we would say middle class, I guess, slightly yeah. older audience as well. Um, but um, for, as, as Gillian yeah. says, for, for, for a brand like Marks and Spencers that started over 100 years ago with a, in a market, um, with a wonderful, effectively a one Wandan Frank market store, um, they've come a long way and they are quite conservative and quite traditional. Yeah, that's right. Quite bureaucratic in their ways. So... So, you know, as, as, as Gillian says, think, tap into these global trends as well, because they are important issues that can help you gain an advantage uh, locally and to, and to start to get noticed um, beyond Rwanda as well. And as a, as a scholar of globalization, what, what I love that we're seeing more and more of, and I know that's part of, part of Shibuka's mission, I know it's very much Rwanda and and, and what you're doing there, but this this human building a more human yeah. connection in the everyday, you yeah. know, because shopping mm. and yeah. buying it's every day, yeah. but developing global connections around the everyday, I think is I think it's got huge potential in the next twenty what? to thirty years. So you see the coffee being produced by a, 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 a female farmer in a province in Rwanda, and then you see it actually in in someone's in someone's coffee table yeah. in the UK. That 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 connection yeah. between the customer and the and the supplier going all the way back through the supply chain. That's quite exciting, isn't it, Nadej? It's how do you very feel about exciting, that? Nadej. 
Yes, please. How do you feel about that, you know, and how you can take the brand forwards and beyond Rwanda by starting to tell those stories in a much more humane, human way? Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, uh, my internet went off. <laughs> but um, uh, I lose a little bit of uh, a little bit of conversation. But yeah, I'm really excited to put it another level. Good, and good. Uh, as she said, um, I think we, we uh, as as uh, people who are in coffee industry, we really need to educate people how to drink coffee at or how to take a coffee. Mm. Most of the time, um, people might think um, people are not uh, coffee are not healthy or are not good to them. Not because the not because they don't like it or because they don't they can't take it, but because they didn't have enough information on mm. which kind of type of, mm. of coffee they can drink according to their healthy. So oh, that's, a, that's um, a really good point, isn't it? That educational perspective, isn't it? it? Is. Educating. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I yeah. tap into Deborah's skills now and say that if, if you're going to do that kind of education, it's the way you do it. Mm. You've got to do it in a fun, yeah. a fun yeah. way. Maybe using, um, yeah. you know, cartoons or yeah. you know what I mean mm. sort of animation mm. yeah yeah you know, because you've got you don't want it to be like formal <laughs> education you, know what it be? you want it to actually yeah. be a fun thing, fun that, thing yeah. that is kind of sharing yeah. your knowledge very good and and that 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 yeah, that, sure. that that plays to yeah, sure. that plays to Beneath's foundation for supporting women it plays to Enoch in terms of, you know, how you guide and take people on tours around Rwanda so that you can, you know, we, we, get, we tap into the human stories for all of you. And I, I hear that, I know that Jeanette has joined us, Deborah. Did, did you, have, do you know? Jeanette? Yes, I was, I was going to um, introduce her. Um, some of you may know Jeanette from RTV and she's here. Um, welcome, Jeanette. And Jeanette and I have been having lots of discussions um, about how she sees the way that you could all develop your storytelling. Um, clearly, she's she's been observing the way that you're talking about um, entrepreneurship um, in, in the media. And I'm sure, Jeanette, um, um, you might like to share some of the ideas that, that, that we have, um, that, that, that we've been um, exploring. Jeanette? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. So I'd like to introduce you to everyone. Everyone knows you from RTV, but I thought it would be quite interesting if you wanted to share with them some of the things that you have noticed um, when they talk about um, on their products and maybe some of the things that you would encourage them to focus on so that their stories are more appealing, more attractive, more engaging. Thank you. And he hello, everyone. I'm sorry I came in late because uh, I was at work. I thought that I would be home at eight, before eight, but... I arrived in late, but uh, I'm so sorry. I, I hope you understand. We do. Um, were you doing Were you doing something interesting um, on on the TV? No, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to in my, in my my in my tomorrow's show. Jeanette, would you share with us some of your how you prepare? What do you look for when you are looking for interesting stories to go onto your show? It would be lovely, I think, for all um, 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 our colleagues to kind of get some insight in mm. terms of how you, you know, look at people and say, ah, oh, which ones do you want to invite and why? Uh, when I'm preparing my, my show, you know, it is uh, some different segments. They are a segment for news. Of course, uh, I can't prepare it before because I have to talk something uh, uh, new. Uh, and there are 
another segment that is uh, for entrepreneurs. It's called in Kinyarwanda, Ivanga. Um, I don't know how to translate it in English, but it's how you uh, someone developed himself and how how he started and where he is now, but also oh. And this is uh, where uh, we interview some entrepreneurs here in Rwanda. And there is another se segment uh, for innovation. And I th think that both of those segments is, can be interesting for our entrepreneurs here because there's, uh, it's where they can uh, talk about their dreams uh, and how they can develop the, the, the projects. And uh, what I would like to hear from them when I will be interviewing them, it's how they, they started, of course, and where they, they are now, but also the, ch the challenges that mm. they, they face. Uh, uh, in the w w and also but uh, showing us how they they would like to develop the, the society because in uh, the, the vision of the government is to create uh, more uh, I think it's uh, 200,000 jobs every year and when you are an entrepreneur wow. you have how you will contribute to this uh, uh, vision of the of your country and for example na, uh, i was uh, uh, following what nadesh was saying and i think it's a very thing that it's it, something that is very interesting because she uh, i think she she would like to develop more his uh, her, her her project and uh, i think she has to show how she will develop that, but also how she will create more, more jobs for young uh, people here in Rwanda because we still have uh, problems for young to, to get jobs. But if she, she's able to, to show that she, uh, through her, her, her project, she will be able to create more jobs, but also to de develop the, the society. She was talking about uh, to about uh, educating people on how to, how and when to drink coffee. Here in Rwanda, people doesn't, more people don't drink uh, coffee, but because I think that they don't know the, the importance of the coffee on, on health, mm. but she can be she's able, she can be able to explain to people that coffee is uh, is healthy and but also explain how and when they can take coffee i think more people will be interested in drinking coffee but especially in her coffee because she will be the one who educated mm. people about coffee. Uh, I think it's when we will be uh, interviewing her, she has to, to, to show that coffee is, uh, is healthy, is important for, uh, for health. And uh, if she can, if she has some, some, some customers who can, test, uh, who can give, uh, give testimony about her coffee, how it is, uh, good, I think it will be, uh, it will be interesting. Mm. Nadej. Uh, uh, Go ahead, also, uh, When uh, I, I was uh, uh, talking with you, we, I told you that I, I noticed that some entrepreneurs here, uh, I, especially in Rwanda, they, they think that they need, they, of course they need help, they, they need uh, that someone um, help them uh, to improve the project. But I think that when you start a project, you are the one who is supposed to, to, to strengthen it first. Of course we'll behave uh, 
you will need uh, uh, advices or other help, but you you are the one who would be need, uh, who would be uh, who is uh, supposed to strengthen uh, or to improve your project. You have to think uh, how you can you can develop it in order to to develop yourself, but also to to change the society where you live. Yeah. So, so Jeanette, so, so you're saying, so you've got, you've got these two strands, entrepreneur strand and innovation strand, which, you know, you're basically saying that um, entrepreneurs here um, are, are um, they would be interested to be involved with, but, but you're, you're saying that they should really focus their storytelling around um, job creation um, how they develop society and then this this really interesting piece here um how, uh, that they must focus on how they are the ones to strengthen the organization is that about personal leadership or uh, community leadership i mean could you tell us some more about that could you kind of unpack that a bit more yeah uh, it's about leadership they, they have to be uh, leaders uh, to show that they are leaders, and when you are talking about your project, you don't. Uh, you, I think, you will not like to say that uh, more than uh, uh, seventy percent of your project came uh, outside. I think you have to show that the the project is yours. Of course, you you, you mm. some some people ha helped you, but. The project is yours, and you have to show that it is yours, and that you have uh, the the ideas, the how you uh, you would develop it. It is in your hands. It's what I, I was trying to say. You have your project in the, in your hands, and you want to to change the society because I think that people will not be interested in something that will uh, will improve you only. They need to know that even right. if you, but they will benefit it from. They will benefit something from it. Okay, mm. I, I I think that's really very clear. Would anybody like to ask Jeanette some questions because she's already begun to give you an indication that you're you're all going to be interviewed by her um, um, as a result of coming to this stage of the work. And um, you may want to ask her some questions. I mean, anyone, um, because she has a very interesting insight. She interv interviews all sorts of people. Um, and, and you might like to understand more what, what, what she's looking for to help convey your business in a, in a really interesting way. So, so would anybody like to ask um, a question to Jeanette? Oh, uh, hi, hi, Janet. Uh, I have uh, only a few questions to ask you. Uh, well, I've been following, but I would like to know um, wh what you do in real life uh, as a business and in your shows, mm. which show do you do and how do you plan to do it every single day? You say you have to plan something like that. And how do you plan? How is your planning being executed? Uh, about my show. Yes, I think, I think she's interested in your show and how you do the planning. And I think she even, uh, I think she thinks that you have a business. Maybe you do, Jeanette. Uh, pray tell, share. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have any business. But uh, about my, my TV show, uh, it is called Izingi uh, Rodivokungu. It's in Kinyarwanda, but it's where we, we talk about... Uh, uh, business uh, issues uh, in Rwanda, but also uh, uh, around the world. And when I'm preparing my show, of course, as I said, uh, it has many segments. It has different segments. Uh, there are segment, a segment about news. And this is about uh, uh, actuality, uh, about uh, 
business and economy uh, news. Um, there, uh, there is also a segment about innovation where I invite or visit uh, entrepreneurs where they talk about the projects, how they started and the challenges they have, but also the, the vision about the, 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 the project. Uh, I have also, uh, there is also another segment about uh, uh, stock exchange, uh, where we, we talk about the interest uh, about uh, investing in the in stock exchange market. Uh, it, it's uh, something new here in Rwanda. Our uh, stock exchange market is started uh, uh, about 10 years ago, I think, but uh, it's something that is uh, still developing. And we uh, sometimes we talk about it because we want to educate people about how to 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 to, to invest in the different shares of some mm. of uh, uh, institutions that are already in uh, on the Rwanda stock exchange. We still have a, a small a small number of institutions because now it's ten institutions, uh, five here in Rwanda and uh, other five institutions is, are um, from outside the country. But uh, I think also, I, 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 if I can share with uh, some enter entrepreneurs here, you can even, uh, we, uh, you sometimes have uh, difficulties from um, borrowing to the, the bank uh, when you need more investment. But the stock exchange is where you can also get funds to, 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 to develop your, 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 your projects because you, you can sell some shares of your company and when there are some investors, you can get funds to develop other projects that you have, but also it help you to 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 work in a transparency because to the one of the criteria to to be accepted on the Rwanda Stock Exchange, you have to be you have to show how you manage your 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 business you have to show that you you work transparently and that your administration is uh, I, I don't know how to say it but you have to to show that your company your business is well managed and it is something that will help you maybe in the future uh, when i also prepare my show i i am wondering what will be uh, interesting for people because uh, our business show is uh, uh, first of all to educate uh, uh, how people can de develop themselves even if you don't have uh, much money but you can uh, start uh, you can start slowly and develop you uh, more and more when you get uh, interesting ideas and when you you know where you can find some funds that this will will help you uh, yeah I, I think it's when, when I, I, if I, I, I can uh, respond to Benet when I am preparing I I am uh, thinking about my audience w what would be uh, interesting for them what would help them develop the, the, themselves if you want to become an inter entrepreneur what can you do? To, to start your business when what can you do to improve what you were, was doing yeah it's I, I don't know if uh, I responded uh, well but I think it's uh, that's how, how I can explain it Jermaine were you happy with that would you like to um, ask her something else uh, well, thank you very much for this old explanation. I like the fact that you talked about the capital market, which is the topic that as a youth I'm currently being interested in. And one last thing is uh, I would like to take this opportunity and request that if possible, I wish one day I'll be one of your, 
your your guest in your show. <laughs> it's my pleasure for me. <laughs> it's now possible, and I would like to connect with you it's, for it's further possible. discussion. Yeah, it, it's possible, and I, I I like to 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 work with uh, young entrepreneurs because you are the one who who can. Uh, who can uh, encourage uh, others to 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 start their business or to develop their project and yeah i i think i will invite you one day or i will visit you uh, have uh, some interviews with you and use it in my show <laughs> all right i would love that may i have your number in the chat below if possible <laughs> we love this jermaine how good do you feel now <laughs> I'm uh, very excited to know that. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You see, th these are the reasons why we come together as a collective so that we can make all these sorts of connections. Deborah, don't... Sorry, Beneath? Beneath, Beneath, you said something? I'm back. Oh, yes. I can now communicate. Go ahead. You, you were going to say something yes. beneath, go ahead. I, I was saying that, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, you seem to have disappeared beneath. Okay, Beneath, so you re when you return, um, you'll come back in the conversation. Um, but this conversation is to everyone. And um, we have been working behind the scenes to to um, 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 invite Jeanette here. And you're all going to get the opportunity to have interviews with Jeanette. So this is something that is going to be available to everyone. Um, part of our process, part of the process has been almost to, you know, warm you up like you're going to the gym. So then when you do meet this amazing colleague, Jeanette, you know, you feel way more confident to explain your story and you can see the level that um, 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 sh she is inviting you to work on. So um, this welcome is actually to everyone. Um, did you want to say something, Daryl? No, I was um, I was listening, really. I love what Jeanette was saying and the advice that she was giving. And um, as you've said, this whole process has been about taking people to this step where you'll all be invited to be part of um, a film that we are going to be showcasing later in the summer. And I think uh, alongside that, really, it's about now working closely with you guys. I was really interested by some of the key themes that are really important that need to be drawn out, such as, you know, leadership, um, impact on your community, job creation, um, corporate governance, and so on. So this helps us really design a mentoring program going forwards with you guys over the next uh, few months to support you in terms of taking your idea forward so that come, come the end of the summer, we'll have a very strong showcase film which you all will feature in telling your wonderful stories and you'll also be able to articulate much stronger propositions ideas which which connect with your your audiences and help you take your your business or foundation to the next level yeah Thank you, Daryl. Um, Beneath, uh, are, are you back? Did you want to ask um, any questions? Had you a question for Jeanette? Had you a question for Gillian? I'm back, but I don't know if you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you very clearly. Okay, thank you so much. So um, I, I would like to say that uh, I'm so, so happy that Jeanette joined us, you know, uh, having her uh, it really means a lot in our initiative, in our businesses. It will, I believe that it will help us grow. So I would like to say thank you so much for this great connection, uh, as well as um, all of the courses we have, we have got from this program, I believe, and I know that 
we will continue working together every day. And also the other thing I would like to highlight is that um, hearing from Jeanette has given me the, the hope that our voice are going to be heard and it is going to to impact our life as well as our beneficiaries life and our businesses so i'm so so happy i can say thank you so much um beneath you seem to be if, if, correct me if i'm wrong but quite emotional when you said our voices are going to be heard. Can you tell me some more about this? Because I know personally from my interaction with Jeanette that she is a solid, genuine um, journalist who's, who's absolutely thrilled to make these connections. And I'm really interested, when you said our voices are going to be heard, what does that really mean for you? Uh, yeah, what I mean is that, you know, like, for me, what I'm doing, uh, I'm working with youth, adolescents, and teen mothers. So working with them, it means that you have first to, to, to understand them, to listen to them, so that you can be able to, to give them solution. So Jeanette said that um, there is this policy of improving, of creating jobs. That's what we are doing. We, we train them on making soaps and other generating, money generating activity. So if we get this opportunity of going out there on the right, Rwanda television and everybody, uh, so many people are following in the Rwanda television. So we can reach too many numbers, know what we are doing and people are going to, it is going to easy our, our job they will know what you're doing. They will, they will, they can support us. It will also um, increase, like, uh, we can even get clients. Why not? <laughs> that, that yeah. are going to be hard. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody <laughs> like to comment? I mean, I think that there are, there are some other questions. I've, I've just seen something in the chat where, um, was it Jean-Paul um, Jean who was asking? Jean-Claude, Claude, sorry, no, Jean-Claude was, yeah, Claude. oh, Claude, Claude, thank you, was asking about what are we, what's the purpose of, of, of today's session? And essentially what we've been doing, first of all, we just connected with each other because that's how business works. You connect, you have conversations mm. and we're developing this space of real trust Mm. Um, and then we have moved into this space where people have begun to feel more comfortable to describe exactly what they do in their businesses. Um, and this is something that you're all going to have to practice to become so much more used to just explaining to people and describing amazing stories. So that's one of the reasons why I was encouraging you all to share those stories that touch the heart, okay? So that's part of the purpose, Jean, I mean, Jean. Lord. And then, you know, we, Claude, sorry, <laughs> thank you. And then we were going to go into the more formal part of in terms of what we're going to do next. Um, Jeanette, as you know, is a is a um, a significant um, journalist, and she has been observing your progress. Um, and um, we were really inviting her here for her to share with you and kind of underscore why you need to think about um, how you how best you can explain your business stories now. It's not just all about, yes, we do this great and that great. When, when Jeanette interviews you, she does actually ask some hard questions. She's, she's, she's a, a hard cookie. So she will ask you questions like, How's, how, how are the costs going? How do you manage your costs? How do you manage your pricing? Do you know, how do you manage your suppliers? So many of the things that we have asked you to consider from the learning platform, she will be asking you those questions, not to catch you out, but to 
to help you to um, describe your story in such an interesting way that it will in itself encourage more Rwandan entrepreneurs to say, oh my gosh, if he can do it, I can do it. Oh my gosh, if she can do it, I can do it. So that's another reason why we're having these conversations. You, you, just by taking on this process, people are being inspired by you. You're being inspired by each other. And conversations are are really the glue so that's that's what we're doing here um claude so i just wanted to share that um i'm, I'm really going to leave it out to, to others because i've been doing lots of talking so yeah i'm, I'm going to stop now <laughs> yeah, i mean jillian do you want to add something in about the importance i did, of, I, I did yes, want to I add something would, yeah, really thank you yeah just to say i think to everyone on the call here how enormously helpful uh, Jeanette's pointers are that Daryl identified. Because I think this session we're going, this stage that you're all going into and that Jeanette's, you know, amazing expertise will just be invaluable to you in helping you is it's combining three things really your own story about how you've developed your project and your venture, the more formal parts of what the business model is, sorry to use a quite a boring term, but what the vis business model is, what your value proposition is, what stage you're at in your business, what the plans are for the future, as much as you have them with figures around that as much as you can, with numbers around that, as much as you can. And then what she was saying very importantly is the context, the social context. And, and that's what's a challenge for a lot of certainly new entrepreneurs to know. So, so that's a big part of the story. So it's that sort of end to end thing. You start with you and then how your the formal parts of how your business or your venture or your social enterprise is becoming a reality with the numbers attached to that and your plans. But then the context, why? What are you doing this for? How is it helping society? How will you create jobs? How is that process? And um, I cannot under underscore what Deborah said about this. You've got to become very fluent about your story. It, it's really, really tough to really get a, a really clear grasp on all those facets I just laid out. And, and you need practice. It doesn't come overnight and you need to write things down and draw pictures and have conversations and test things out on people. So um, I, I just think you're very lucky to have Jeanette's expert advice. I come from a journalistic background and one thing journalists learn is, you know, they have to deliver something in a short space of time, got to make sure everything's in there. So the way she listed those things for you, and you'll be able to listen to the recording. Again, I'd suggest you go back and listen to what she said, because you can see clearly um, what, how, she, how she's suggesting you need to approach this. And it, it it's something you have to learn. I think, I don't know what Daryl thinks about that. I don't think you just know it. No, I think, as you always say, you have to keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. And um, we encourage all of our five to do more research and understand more about their market and their context and, and, and other similar businesses. I think one of the things we are going to be introducing them to during the program is is industry mentors that they can also just tap into occasionally. So, for example, um, Gillian, somebody we know, Kelly Davis at, at the Good Wash Company, for example. Brilliant. You know, yeah, who, you know, in terms of what Beneath is doing in terms of soap manufacturing and, but also just in terms of costing up product and, and manufacturing and thinking through those issues. For somebody that has started up an amazing brand which is now getting you know a footprint within the likes of john lewis and you know those types of stores in the uk 
So I think we want to bring in those types of people and other social entrepreneurs from, from other coffee brands that are now maybe at a more advanced stage. More advanced, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think I think because you can you can certainly learn, can't you, from those that are at a at a yeah. more of a, a, a stage of growth and a, a stage further forward in their their planning and thinking. So we want to bring in industry mentors, don't we, um, Deborah, um, to sit alongside us as mentors, and but also to have these collective sessions. Which, which are so powerful, so that you become a really strong, well, I guess the academic term might be a community of practice, but essentially a community, yeah, a community where you can share and learn from each other um, and, and reflect on what's working for you. And, and so you're, you're, you're stronger together. And we know that's really an important part of the, uh, the Rwandan societal values as well, this sense of community. You know, well, so, and the startup ecosystem. Yeah. Anywhere, Absolutely. it's it's all about sharing. Yeah. It's all mm -hmm. about sharing stories on a yeah. peer to peer level. It's yeah. really important. But I also loved what Jeanette said about you know Rwanda's need to hear your stories uh -huh. so that you encourage other young entrepreneurs. Yeah. So that that's an important part, and that's why I think you know, as as Deborah says, talking about the heart of your story and where it comes from is is an important facet but but it the 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 art if i might say the art is in balancing all those kinds of different elements that Jeanette pointed out and that Daryl and myself have been talking about and getting that balance right for you and and your kind of script right you know mm. I, I, there's an analogy with research that, which is my background, yeah, where, where you know, we, we try to train researchers who do quite complex work, but they need to be able to, if somebody asks them, what is your work about? They need to, within a few minutes, be able to capture that fluently, mm. to just to, you know, to in a simple way to explain what they do, why they're doing it, how they're doing it, and what the end goal is. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and you know, you have to learn how to do that, and you have to yeah. practice it. Yeah, very good, good points. Very good. You just practice, practice, practice. You know, rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. So you become very, you own it. And as as yeah. um, and I think yeah, go back to what Jeanette said. You know, seventy percent of the story has to be about you. It's you mm -hmm. and how you've you are you're leading and driving the business yeah. forwards. Yeah? yeah, yeah. And then of course you may have other parts of the team, but it's you that's the the voice and the face of your own organization and, and getting comfortable to be in that in that place and i think i think going back to something which deborah said earlier was why are we doing what we're doing now because this is a this is a different space that we're now creating from where we were for the six-week program and i think mean, you know certainly jeanette and deborah and myself we've we've observed you and that's why you're here now. That's why we made the invitation to you to be here on this part of the journey. It's a different, it's a different way forwards. It's a much uh, more closely, a, a much closer relationship that we'll be developing with you over the future uh, weeks and months ahead. And we'll be certainly coming back to you next week with the, with the program as it, you know, in terms of the dates and the what's required when and so on. And uh, it'll be very structured. And we will be continuing to use the virtual learning environment. So if you're, if if anybody there is not comfortable with the VLE, we'll we'll we'll, we'll take you through the VLE again, um, because we'll certainly be using that as a resource for putting up a lot of background materials and resources as well. Deborah. Yeah, I mean, I suppose we're doing lots of talking, and I'm always interested mm -hmm. yeah. um, in 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 what other people have to say. So, um, Enoch. Um, questions, thoughts, or comments? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I'm curious. And, and, you know, whatever your thoughts are, questions, you know, please feel really comfortable and safe um, in terms of what you'd like to share. Are there any questions? Are there any comments? Are there any, you know, just anything? Yeah, for me, uh, I, I can I can I can say it is a question. Uh, here, most of people they think. Uh, by the way, first of all, I'm I'm in the industry of tourism and hospitality, so most of my question are based on those things. 
Yeah, so what I can say, I would like to ask uh, Mrs. Janet. Uh, most of the time, the Rwandese or some people from here in Africa, they think that the traveling is for the, the white people, or they are for the foreigner people who are just coming to enjoy the beauty of the things that we have. And most of the time you see, maybe we can be living in Rwanda and we doesn't know even which, which, which things that we have here in Rwanda, which can attract people from abroad or which attractions do we have here in Rwanda? And then we hear some people talking things, we see them on television. So maybe they just know it in the films, in the movies. So which is really not sound good. Uh, and I would like to, do you really know why the most of people they think that the traveling or just going out or just discovering different things it belongs to those people from abroad or it's belong to those people who are coming from the foreigners countries so and the other things uh, i was wondering what can we do or what which fight can we fight to make people, the local people, to like uh, this domain? Like we know, we have, we are, uh, we are having even domestic packages, so the people from local they can just enjoy them at the cheapest prices. They go, they visit everything in Rwanda. They go, they we can even take them out of outside of Rwanda to discover so many things. But sometimes they think it's not belong to them because of maybe they, it can be expensive and the other things that sometimes they doesn't feel even to go because they doesn't know to know much. So they just like to hear things in history. They doesn't know to go. They doesn't want to go where those history are based on. So. I really want to know what, or maybe if she can ever talk to some people, why are they people having that mind? And what can we do to change that mind so that we can even meet the people who want to go to see the gorillas, we see the Rwandese who want to go to Nyungwe to see the forests, to discover, to know the, 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 the animals that we have here in Rwanda. So what can we do to make them feel, to make them have that spirit? Mm -hmm. That is my question. And if maybe you have some ideas, she can say, she can share that idea with us or with me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Enoch. Uh, first of all, I, I, you, you mentioned uh, the, the, the cost. Uh, I, I think also Beneath uh, talked about it. Sometimes the cost is very high and uh, more people don't have uh, uh, enough money to, to go to, uh, to, to, to visit uh, what you, you was talking about. But also I was wondering why uh, uh, every uh, tourism company proposed to only to visit uh, uh, animals and some uh, other things that we, we found in, in the parks. Why don't you uh, show that there are some other uh, things that people can can visit. For example, uh, you can develop uh, tourism uh, about uh, culture uh, about our culture, mm -hmm. because some people don't even some even some Rwandans don't uh, know our culture. You can develop that aspect of uh, tourism about the culture of Rwanda. I think that many people will be interested in it uh, uh, instead of visiting uh, gorillas and some other animals. Maybe it's it's my point of view. Maybe Rwandans don't, don't like to 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 visit uh, animals. Maybe they would like to visit some other things. Why don't you uh, develop these aspects of uh, tourism? Uh, you can, uh, you can in in your story you can find find some uh, something else to talk about, to talk about for. Uh, for bring uh, so you can bring uh, uh, or interest many people in your uh, tourism uh, in what you 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 are proposing for the tourism. I think that first of all the cost is uh, a, a a problem that many people don't have enough money to to 
to to pay this but also what you are proposing i think you you have to think about something else to to propose to to Rwandans because we don't uh, need uh, all of us don't don't need to go to visit gorillas or uh, akajera park we have something else maybe we have something else that we can uh, be interested in yeah sorry yeah yeah, yeah. The, the thing that i can add on uh, you know sometimes yeah uh that might be maybe expensive yes i do agree uh, and most of people from rwanda they are struggling of how they can get food how can they can get some school fees for their families for their children so we don't want to advise them to go and spend those like a million to see the gorilla like that much to see the, the those expensive packages but we still we still having the those cheapest Package where maybe we can take them even to discover. Sometimes in Kinyarwanda we have those historical sites when maybe you say on Urutari Rwanda and then you someone can hear ah, Urutari Rwanda and then he sees something, he, he, it sounds like something foreign which is not good. Maybe someone can have just a trip from Kigari to that place, which can just go, he go, he's just sit there, he enjoy the view, he see the history. Maybe someone can help them even to see what he's talking about. That is very cheap and that is very nice trip to that we can advise those type of people to do. And sometimes we we are having even this the, the, the coffee trips. Sometimes when you are talking about the coffee trip to Rwanda, they say, ah, we have even coffee around the home. Maybe we can go there and then we see the coffee plantation and then we finish everything. So that's when, that's the problem that my, my colleague has been saying that most of people, they doesn't drink coffee because they, they just see it. They doesn't know the benefit of coffee. They doesn't know the type of coffee. Most of people, they, they even know that we have only type of coffee which is wrong. So they can maybe, I don't know if we can, I don't know how, why, what I can say, maybe if it's to fight or if it's to start teaching them that they can be having that spirit of right to know different things, discovering the things in, in our countries. You can start with your friends, maybe your friends, and your friends will tell their friends and their friends will tell their friends and so on. So you will have uh, uh, many customers or many clients from around the, uh, around the Rwanda, but you can uh, start with uh, uh, some group of people that you, you, you know, and those group of people will tell their friends that uh, Enoch, uh, even if you, you, you think that he, his uh, company is about tourism, but he have uh, some, uh, especially, uh, some different uh, things that he, he, he can show, show or he can make you di discover uh, our culture, our ancestral uh, history. Yeah, I think you can find something else to, to, to some, some, something to, to, to propose to people, starting with your friends and your family, maybe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ah, very rich, very rich conversation. And, and this is exactly why we come here to absorb and, and reflect and ask ourselves difficult questions um, and then to find these answers. Um, Claude? Yes, Garen. So first of all, thank you so much for this conversation. So I already like to answer this question from Enoch. I said that, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yes, you're perfect. Can you hear me? Yes, we can yes, hear you nice yes, and clearly. Yes, go yes, ahead, yeah, please. Yes, yes, go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to uh, answer this question of, from Enoch. 
So first of all, economically, we can think about uh, the price that the first factor, the high cost. Hmm? Secondly, we can think about our culture, African cultural or specifically Rwandan's culture. Some people, they think that no need of visiting like, uh, like trees, like animals, instead of visiting their friends in their homes, that is the culture. And uh, the third one, someone who take the time for visiting uh, Looks like he's disappeared for a while. Um, when you return, some place, oh, some there you're back. <laughs> the people who have the curiosity, I think that they have some some skills, some knowledge about something. He, which one he has, uh, which one which one he, he brings some curiosity, and you go not there to to observe and to catch well, to satisfy her or his curiosity. So that three factors, I think that they caused that um, question of Mr. Enoch. Yeah. Thank you so much. Can, can I bring in something here as an observer? Um, yes, please. As a, uh, again, it comes back to this cut and pasting idea that if you look at all tour operators across Rwanda, they all seem to offer, as Jeanette says, the same sort of packages. So it's very product driven rather than under, rather than looking at life through the, as, as Claude has just said, understanding the, the needs of the consumer and understanding what it is that they need not just in terms of where they want to go, but how they want to go and how they want to feel when they're going there. So I think this is part of the process that we're going to be working with, as Gillian said, one part is the value proposition and understanding then not just the value proposition, how it's then priced, how it's costed, and how you present these propositions to consumers because you've started to identify the part who they are and what they're looking for so as a as um as as um uh, you know as a as a uk guy that now lives here most of the time with my rwandan wife i observe that it's very much you know they all seem to be product driven not consumer driven it's not about the experience from the customer the, the packages are not value adding they're all very similar so therefore, there isn't much differentiation in the marketplace, and they're all trying to, they're trying to, I don't know, it's a, it's a scattergun, just something will hit on the wall, and it will hit, and something will stick, but it's not very well targeted, you know? It, it, it's like if you play paintball, you know, you, you're trying to, <laughs> maybe that's not the ideal analogy, but it's just come to my head, but, you know, you want to really target who it is you're aiming at. And I think in this country, the ideas of segmenting the, the community and choosing what parts of the community you really want to hone in on needs more development. And hopefully that's an opportunity through this process. It's interesting that you are a broadcast journalist for the answers, but actually it's the responsibility of the entrepreneur to go and find out those answers and to investigate what's happening in the market, you know? And so... The answers have to come from the work that you do as entrepreneurs. And yes, we can give you some ideas and techniques. Indeed, we, we talked about the ideas of segmenting the market in, a, in an earlier week in, on the VLE. But we need to constantly revisit these issues because I see a lot of product-centric thinking rather than thinking, well, who in the market, who in the community might well want to be interested in buying these types of services and what is it they really need and again so you go okay there's a coffee tour and then you find that five or six 
tour operators offer coffee tours, but what's going to make your one the one? What makes your one the one that everyone has to go on? What is making yours so special? And I'm, I, I know that Deborah and I hope that through this process, out of the work that Enoch and Nadej can start to look at doing together, we could come out with a, yeah, exactly, Julian. We can come out with a collaborative partnership yeah. offering. Yeah? yeah, it's here. Definitely. I think you, you, you've all raised some very, very, very important um, 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 things for everyone to consider. And as Daryl said, you've asked the you've asked um, the journalist, and the journalist is pointing it back to you, and that's the point that she's making. When she interviews you, she's actually expecting you to have these answers. She gives you some answers, but we're interested. Everyone is interested in the entrepreneur having discovered some of these answers and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know the answer. Well, that's why we work together. But you are the leaders to keep saying, what is it that my, my, my mentors and my coaches keep saying to me that, that, I, that, that I need to really pick up? So this whole thing, I mean, Daryl has said, don't be like everyone else. Please start really asking yourself, how are we solving the customer's problems? Do you know, Enoch, you might find other people are very frustrated as well. They may well want to know their country, but they may want to know their country in a way that you are not aware of. So you have to keep asking them questions to say, how do you want to know your country? Um, Claude used the word culture i keep hearing the word culture so perhaps you might want to reshape some of your 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 offering to talk more about culture and why is culture so important mm. ask them why why what is the pain the frustration that they're feeling that you can help them to 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 work out do you know, what is it? Why has more than, well, there's two or three people have said already, we want to know about the culture. Yeah. We're not always interested in the animals. We want to know about culture. So perhaps explore that. And this is something that I learned as an entrepreneur. Do you know sometimes when you've got your idea and then the customer says something different, you're like, oh. Is this criticism? It's not criticism. Yeah. They're, they're helping you. They're helping you. So it's really as you get closer, when they say something different to what you expect, open up, welcome it. It's not a criticism. They're actually in a conversation with you and they, they are welcoming you to welcome how you can help them as it were and notice i'm using the word welcome it is very welcoming so they're not rejecting you saying oh that's total rubbish but they are saying can you talk about culture a bit more than than, than the than the animals so so enoch i'm curious what what are you making uh, how was this working out for you in your mind as you're now hearing this yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy, by the way. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> sometimes we are, we are here to benefit. Uh, and I've got some point. Uh, sometime I, I was thinking maybe about wrong, about something. Uh, but now I can get the point. Now I'm going to, to strength uh, about how I can make people love their culture, how I can make the Rwandese to love our culture the Rwandan character, and then we shall make, uh, maybe we can design it, how they can love it, and then they join. 
Yeah, so I've got the point, and that ad price is okay. very sharp <laughs> in my mind. Yeah, and uh, this is something I, I'm going to share with you. I had yeah. a major um, 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 entrepreneurial fail. You know, you know, I work in education, so I off I decided I'm going to set up some training company. Do you know how many people attended my sessions? No, you know tell me. You know the answer. Zero. And I, and, and I, I, yeah. And I said, oh no, I can't tell anyone. I mean, that was about 20 years ago. But for, for, for ages, because I decided, right, I'm going to put the, the center. It, it was in the middle of the countryside. I decided, yes, it's, it's really good. I'm going to teach them marketing and da da da. But did I actually talk to anyone? No. I talked to myself and I decided, and it was so embarrassing. And it's only 20 years later today that I am out in myself. And I'm saying it was a major, thank you, Daryl. It was a major fail. Um, and yeah, but I learned it's not about me just because I think I know this. It's about me listening to yes. the customer. It's not and, about and you. It's, yeah. yeah. I just had to, and, and Enoch, I shared that because, I mean, and I haven't shared that with anyone. So no. now I'm sharing, and, and this is recorded. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll share my big failure as well, but um, I'll do it another time. I'll share my success and my failure. I will be going back to listen to them. I will be going back <laughs> <laughs> so, so I suppose oh. what, what I'm saying to you is you're receiving feedback. It's not criticism. Because obviously since then I've gone on and done wonderful things. Of course I have. I, and I've had paying customers. But I do remember that first one, OMG. And I was like, this can't be happening. And I spent good money, you know, yeah. setting it all up, etc. The point I make, well, you, you, you can take whatever points you want from this, but I, I'm, my thing to you is when you hear customers are steering you in another way, it's not criticism. It's, it's there to shape, um, help you and to save some money. You don't waste your money. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I've run today. Day. Nadej, Nadej, you had your head up for some time. Did you want to contribute? Uh, yes. Um, uh, <laughs> actually, most of the most of the thing I wanted to say, uh, you, you guys, you almost say it. But <laughs> uh, what what I want to to talk to Enoch is. Um, is uh, three things. First of all, if you want to have customers or if you want to uh, succeed, if I may say, for your, for, your, for your tour point of the day, you don't have to think as the boss. You have to think as the client. Because that is when you're going to satisfy them. And uh, the second thing you have to you have to think according to the according to the to the season and what is going on. Uh, let's say uh, you have if you want to interest people to go to see Akagera, tell them something they don't know in your advertisement. Don't tell them what they know. Because what you will tell in advertisement that you are going to visit Akagera, if you advertise and show me and say something, I know I'm not interested in to come. So you have to tell me something I don't know. That's one. Second thing, um, the first point is to think as a client, not to think, think as the boss. The second thing is to know the season. What is booming nowadays? What is uh, what's something that booming like everyone needs to know about? 
okay? So that you can put people to, to be interested, to know the reason. Let me, let me give you an example. There might be people who are asking why Nyiragongo has uh, vomited recently. And that is your region. So you may make a tour and talk about volcanoes. You interest them about what is going on now. Don't, don't do something that um, might interest them in, uh, in long term. Do something that people are hearing. People are interested to know why, why the reason, why, what is going on, you get. That's, that's the second point. The third point um, uh, is the point everyone talked about. It's about um, the, the, the cost. And uh, I always say most of the time we fail because we want to succeed alone. We want to do everything alone. And that is where most of the people fail. You have to know uh, how to make partnership, how to do MOUs with companies that you focusing to visit. For example, if you say, um, let, let, let's take this example. Let's say uh, we are 12 million Rwandan fronts, the uh, uh, Rwandan population, sorry. And uh, let's say uh, 6M, six million people can afford to do those uh, tourism uh, campaigns that you, 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 you can propose them. So ask yourself as a client, as the first point I said, what do I going to put on this platform that will make these people to come? So even if you get 10 people every week, that's a huge already. And that is what, uh, Mrs. Janet talk, talked about, start with your family and friends because that is the people who knows you, who trust you, who can, who, can, who can support you first. And those people are the one who are going to bring another one, another one. And you have to learn how to do the promotions and the MOUs with those people. I give you an example. If today uh, I may say it's so expensive to go to see gorillas, according to the, to, the, to the cost that they charge nowadays. But if you looked well and you make sure, let's say uh, you, you can go to RDB. You told them, I'm a young entrepreneur. I want to make a co collaboration with you. Don't look when the, the high season of go looking go leaders because no one is going to give you that space. Look the time which is which is low, like everyone not going to see gorillas. Focus those time, and focus to to the one who can give you the the the, the right to go there and make a contract with them. As I said, if you say uh, uh, it's a summertime, maybe there's a lot of visitors. There's a lot of uh, people who come for vacation and stuff. It, you, you, might, you might not get a time to go to see gold dealers, but you have to look those low term when there is no visitors to, to see uh, gold dealers and stuff. And you make a proposal to, to RDB, you tell them this, uh, this high season is for you guys, uh, I can't complain, but I want to go with this low season, you get. So that's when maybe the, the price will go low and uh, people will be interested to see it. Uh, but as I said, why should I come? The point that will make me come is to you to think about it, uh, about the, 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 those events as a customer, not as a boss, not as mm -hmm. a tour uh, guide. No, think as a customer. That is when you're going to attract me. But if you think like a boss, then you will tell me, oh, tomorrow we are going to Akagira. And you find out me, I want to go to Canopy. So that's the differences. That's uh, most of the time tour, tour guides that you, you meet and uh, you don't get uh, local people to come. And most of the time, our, our uh, there's something that Claude said, they said, um, uh, in courage of Rwandans, we love to go to visit our, our neighbors, our family members more than to visit the place. Uh, 
uh, except to me to not agree with you, because <laughs> what can put me to get out of the house can put me to go anywhere. So if I can go to visit my friend just to uh, sit and say nothing, I can still use that time to go somewhere else. So the point is not me not coming. The point is, what did you put on the table that will interested me to come to that place? So um, according to uh, other thing I was planning to say, I think everyone said it, but yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to uh, make an addition. Thank you. Thank you too, well noted. Thank you very much. I think there's been an incredible amount of wisdom that's been shared. And I think all of us have grown from this um, 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 real um, sharing of minds. And, and that's the reason why people often call these spaces mastermind spaces, because we start to grow. So again, going back to why are we here? Why are we having these conversations? Um, we are really nourishing our minds and, you know, picking up on so much clarity from, 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 from different members. Um, I'm aware of time um, I'm, and I'm wondering um, what we might want to do next, Daryl. Yeah, I think um, we've had a very long and productive discussion and this is how we will continue to go forwards over the next uh, coming months because sometimes you need to have some individual time with someone from the Shibuka team and sometimes you need to come together collectively to share the work that you've been doing and to get inspiration and um, from others in terms of the ideas you're developing. Um, I know that next week we're going to come back to you with the structured program we have in mind. I think it was really helpful today to listen to uh, Jeanette in terms of what those key focal points are from her perspective, because those are the key issues that we really need to keep coming back to again and again and again and again um, in terms of a Rwandan context to make sure that you can ultimately build sustainable businesses with sustainable business models that focus in on the needs of the customers and enable you to, uh, to grow your business and create more jobs for Rwanda's economy. That's what we're here to do and here to help guide you. So um, I think in terms of next steps, we're going to go away and think about in terms of individual mentors for each of you from the team and also um, putting together that structured program. So week on week, you know, these, these sessions become really spaces, as Deborah said before, safe spaces for you to, to create your ideas and to, to grow and be inspired. Um, Gillian, do you want to add anything as well? Well, just to say that what struck me um, about uh, a lot of what's been said, I mean, I love, I love uh, Deborah's story of failure because we all know that most very <laughs> successful entrepreneurs, you don't get to be a successful entrepreneur usually without some big stories oh, of failure. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it I'm hurts. On, I'm on a new it entrepreneurial hurts. path and I have lots of little failures all the time, which I have to learn from and overcome. And, and as, as colleagues have said, grow from. So other than Deborah's story of failure, which was brilliant, and Jeanette's expert advice, which I think we all need to think about, the strongest message here is, is the peer-to-peer feedback and and advice because it, it it has been my experience of working in startup ecosystems that most entrepreneurs learn most from their peers i mean mm. i agree with daryl mm. but having people who are further along the path is really important as experts to share their experience and whatever but but I somehow, I mean, I think that's why boot camps and other kinds of things that Google, et cetera, have always run and have been so productive. They're the best things I've been to a whole weekend with a group of entrepreneurs. Mm. And basically, we're just sharing, you know, this is what I want to do and questioning each other about, well, how are you going to do it? And, oh, that doesn't sound very good. And Yeah. So um, I just think mm. it, I'm, I'm just really... I feel really pleased to 
you know, be yeah. eavesdropping on the peer-to-peer <laughs> sharing. And um, I just feel the strength, the strength of it. That's where the strength is. That's the ecosystem yeah. in a big way. And, and I think, Gillian, you've touched on a very important point that we're going to be building in, which is that some of these sessions, we're not going to be here. Right. It's for right. them yeah. to have these discussions and then learn from each other. And, and and also, I think I know many of all of them here like using WhatsApp that create a WhatsApp group, but we won't be in it. Yeah, this is for exactly. you guys. It's your space. Yeah. So we're going to create a new WhatsApp group. And I'm sure Beneath will or Jermaine will consider becoming the admin for that because it's your space, your development. We can put in some ideas, yes. but then ultimately it's down to you guys to to have those discussions. And then when we come back together again, you can sh- tell us what you've achieved and what you've learned along the way. Yeah. So we, we don't always have to be in these sessions. And indeed, we won't be. There'll be some where we are and some where we're not and some where we would encourage you to to um, to use the Zoom platform by yourselves, really. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's always yeah. inspiring, listen, because you can learn a lot, as, as uh, Gillian says, from each other. And it's important as well that you become a, a collaborative community, working through ideas together, which I think is quite new for, for entrepreneurship development in, in Rwanda. And it's quite, quite, quite new. Oh, something has happened. I, I, oh, sorry. You froze for a second, Daryl. Go ahead. I, oh, OK. I'm still here. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I, yeah. So I think I think that's important that we will put together a program which has individual mentoring time, group peer to peer mentoring time, very importantly, but also where we come back together in these sessions again and bring bring some people in to uh, to share the learning. Uh, Deborah, I think that's a good place to reflect. But we will come yes, back. Yes, so I think. It, yeah. So I think so. So on that positive note, everyone, we want you to know that. Um, you've all been very successful in taking this journey so far. We've closed one door, okay. Um, those others who um, 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 we're still inviting them to continue using the VLE. So please don't worry about them. They're still continuing their journey. Um, you have successfully um, 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 completed this stage. We've had this amazing sharing. Um, and now you've stepped into a new phase. And so we welcome you. Um, and we really hope that um, you're just as enthused as we are about the next steps that you're going to take. We sure you are. Um, and on that positive note, I'd like to say um, night, night. Night, night. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Good thank you. Night, night. Okay. Stay in touch. Good night, night. night. Good night, good night, good night. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jeanette. Uh, Good luck tomorrow, Benny. And um, see you you next time. Hey, Daryl. We'll talk off. Yeah, yeah. Are you there? We'll. we'll, No, I'm not much better. No, I'm going to go back to bed now. (laughs) It's okay. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Don't worry. We'll we'll talk another time. I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. And thank you so much, Gillian. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Night, night. Night, night. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Bye, bye. Night, night. Bye, bye. I'm just going to sit here.